many years now, cars have been built all over the world. And although a lot of manufacturers are still based in a select few countries, all these car companies build cars everywhere. You'll find that you know your car that you your Japanese car could have been built in Turkey or your your Vauxhall could have been built in Poland. This car is no different. This Toyota Auris, which is Japanese car through and through, was built in the UK and not only that it was built just less than an hour's drive away from where I live. So it's quite an unusual opportunity to get with the car on review to uh, drive back to its place of birth to uh, the Toyota Manufacturing UK plant just outside of Derby in the Midlands of the UK. A bit like a, uh, a pilgrimage for this car. Now I imagine it probably hasn't been back to that factory since it first left it ten years ago and if uh, this car had any feelings which we never know, maybe they do I, I think it would hopefully be quite excited so the Toyota Auris which was released in 2007 replaced the Toyota Corolla which was a mid-sized family hatchback that had been built for many decades I think they wanted to try and explain that they'd moved on slightly with the Auris and that it wasn't just like the Corolla that preceded it and Auris is uh, based on the Latin word for gold which is Aurum so that's how we know it's Auris and not Oris or Auris fast forward to the 2020s and they've gone back to uh, Toyota Corolla this isn't your granddad's Corolla anymore this is the new Auris and then uh, ten years later it's uh, this isn't your granddad's Auris this is the new Corolla so it just uh, you'll just go around in circles like that a lot of companies are guilty of it maybe in another 10 years we'll have a new Auris or something but that's uh, that's enough waffle for now so this uh, particular car is a 2011 1.6 Valvematic petrol now it's important to note that this is a Valvematic and not a VVTi which was uh, the slightly earlier petrol engine they used in the Auris now, a lot of what they were saying back in the day was that the cabin was really boring. It's not exciting, but it's, it's quite nice actually. Like the way they've done the lighting, the, the orange lights, they all work together. This centre console with its sort of gap underneath it, it was an interesting idea which they did talk quite a lot about when they made this car because I think they were quite proud of the fact they'd done something slightly different from everyone else and that's that you can basically put your hand right through underneath the centre console and then the rest of the, the design is just quite neat neat and tidy a nice selection of silvers and blacks and greys but then the orange lights stand out like this one above the demister here that I've got on it just looks quite nice the way it blends across and then the, the dials in front of me when I first looked at them they had this, they've got this weird 3D effect because they're kind of dished the dials in front of you and then they were kind of making me feel like my eyes were going a bit almost like a magic eye 3d effect but they actually look quite nice and, and they made a bit more effort than a lot of uh, other manufacturers at the time to, to actually create something that looks nice that you look at all the time interestingly the front of the car you've got these weird quarter lights it's quite unusual to see not sure how much I can see through those but better than not having them. So is it comfortable? Now I'm driving along now at 50 miles an hour. It's relatively quiet. It's, it's certainly quiet enough. So it's not, it's not doing my head in with the wind and road noise. The seats are quite comfortable actually. But these are just the cloth the cloth seats that you get as standard. I can feel that there's some support for my lower back, which is good. And also they're quite soft and cushiony. The steering's really light, so I can just kind of casually drive like this. I'm not, uh, not having to constantly... Obviously it's not got a super sharp steering, so you're not constantly having to correct every little input like this. You just you can just keep the steering wheel where it is in one place and you'll uh, be going in a straight line. Yeah, the ride's quite comfortable. 
Um, it's got big fat tyres on the alloys, and I think that really helps. It's a generally comfortable car to be in. Notice that there are no cup holders in this interior. Where am I going to put my massive Starbucks cappuccino? And rest it between my legs. Well, I was talking crap because I've just found the cup holder. It was hiding uh, just under this vent. We've got two by the looks of it. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Toyota. Pops out and then doesn't really want to go back in. You have to. Okay. That's not the most. Uh, it's not quite on the Saab level of fancy cup holder, that. It's a bit creaky and whatnot. But hey, it's there, so that's good. It's actually a decent size as well. It fits the, uh, the big bottle, which often doesn't fit in cup holders in cars, so. So, as I say, this is the 1.6 litre Valvematic petrol, which has 130 horsepower and does not 60 in 9.7 seconds. And that is, it's enough. You're not dangerously slow when you're joining a motorway. But at the same time, they're obviously balancing it for economy, so... Yes, you're not going to be rip-roaring onto the motorway and already doing above the speed limit by the time you join. But also, you're not going to be dawdling on there dangerously. But there were a few other options. Now, I was under the impression that there was no range topper sporty version of the Auris, but there was. It was the SR180, and that, that was only sold from 2007 to 2009, and they stopped. And interestingly, it, sign of the times those years, the SR180 was a diesel, so the hottest Auris was uh, a 2.2 litre diesel with 175 horsepower. And in 2010, they introduced the Auris Hybrid. Now that is an interesting prospect because the Hybrid is basically a Toyota Prius underneath. It's the car for people who want a Toyota Prius but don't want to dance and shout about it. How do you feel, car? You're going to be back home soon, back at your uh, place of birth. No, they always say Toyotas are soulless, don't they, but I don't really get that. I, I, I don't see them as being any more soulless than any other car, really. All cars, are, in my opinion, have got character. Now, although the, the Auris is not designed to be sporty, there is at least one thing here that makes it feel sporty, and that's the gear sticks up here. You can just see my hand resting on it. It's high up, puts me in mind of the uh, Honda Civic Type R. Now, of course, what Toyota are, are very well known for is their reliability and build quality. So the owner, Michael, thanks Michael for lending me the car. Um, he's not had any issues with the car since he'd had it two years ago. It's on just under 60,000 miles. The interior looks nice and fresh, it doesn't look worn, can't hear any like creaks or rattles or anything, Maybe a little bit from the centre console over bumps. We've made it, we've made it car, we're at Toyota, and oh, will I be able to actually get in or park anywhere? Toyota Manufacturing UK opened in 1989 producing the Carina E and has since built a Vensis, Corolla and of course Auris models. It keeps 3,000 people in employment and is the size of a small town. In 2020 it produced 120,000 cars. It was nice and quiet and I managed to park outside the main entrance for a few photos. What's that? The shell of a new Corolla? Just going off down the road. Don't know what they're doing with that. Oh hey, don't forget that like button. Well that was fun. Interesting to uh, see the factory. After that hour or so drive, 
I still feel completely relaxed and comfortable in this car, so it's done its job well. So here's the thing I'm not a big fan of. It's the fuel gauge in front of me here. It's uh, measured out in blocks. I've mentioned this before in another video. A full tank is eight blocks of fuel. And currently I've got four blocks left, but I had four blocks when I set off an hour ago. So at some point I'm gonna lose a quarter of all the fuel I've got. It's just gonna disappear from that gauge and then I'll be down to three blocks. But it's just very un inaccurate and <laughs> difficult to tell exactly how much fuel you've got. So. I get why they've done it, because it's quite nicely integrated into the dials in the centre. I do like that. Here's, here's a weird complaint that I don't think I've heard anyone in any car review ever say, but... Uh, it's got a really loud starter motor. Can't start this car quietly. Everyone will know. So normally I have uh, a guy who sits in the back called Backseat JJ, who looks a lot like me but wears a white turtleneck. But he's gone AWOL in one of my recent videos he just got out of the car and I've not been able to find him since so in the absence of him I'm gonna have to try and do this myself and see what I think of the back seats so bear with me I think he'd be pretty happy back here so really quite impressive actually I really wasn't expecting this um, I've got loads of knee room so it's set for me at six foot uh, and acres of headroom as well so loads of space I mean there's not much back here electric windows uh, no ventilation or anything on the back uh, no light I've got a nice Jesus handle here for when the uh, driver's getting a bit leery um yeah and then the seats fold back which is good and there's curtain airbags all the way back here as well so you're well protected it's got an interesting glove box in that it's split into two parts the, the lower part and the upper part but now I've, I've not seen that in any car for a long time because most manufacturers they're using that upper part of the dash for the airbag but the airbag's still there it's just behind it so somehow they've managed to give you two glove boxes Stuck in traffic now, so I'll just have a look around the cabin. Uh, interesting, what we've got here? Oh, we've got uh, this little thing to hold. What is that for? It can fit like uh, papers and cards and things in there. Not, not nothing too heavy. So, something else that got bandied around about these sorts of Toyotas, uh, I think originally Clarkson, it was Clarkson's fault. He was likening them to washing machines and I was thinking is this car like a washing machine and even if it is well I quite like my washing machine it's pretty useful it you know it does it, it does its job very well <laughs> washes my clothes and uh, does it without any any problems and uh, what does this car do well you get in it and you drive somewhere and it doesn't cause you any problems. It doesn't cause your wallet any problems. It doesn't cause you any problems in terms of breaking down and not being able to get where you're going. And uh, it doesn't cause your back or you know, general comfort or your ears. It doesn't cause you any problems. So, so I'm hoping that this review of the Auris is slightly different to uh, any that you've ever seen or read before. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this one, please remember to hit the like button and uh, also let me know if you've got one of these, what you think about it. Do you like the car? Has it been a good car to you? And as always, uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.